Hi, this is Brendan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Adam, Kenny, and Dion for another episode of Wuxia Weekend. And tonight we're talking about a slightly different genre. We're going to talk about the film A Moment of Romance, which is a Benny Chan film starring Andy Lau, Jacqueline Wu, and Ng Man Tat. It's sort of a tragic romance against the backdrop of a power struggle within a criminal organization, a sort of a street gang type situation. And it sort of veers into heroic bloodshed. Um, I think we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what genre that this film occupies, and, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about the plot. But before we get there, I just want to mention that we have a, um, a Patreon, which people can go to and support. There's a link in the description below. Uh, the reason that we're able to do this episode tonight is because we used our, our money from the Patreon to get DVDs for everybody, so everyone was able to watch the film. And if we didn't have the Patreon, we wouldn't be able to do this episode because we otherwise we have to rely on a film that's on Prime or Netflix. So, um, so yeah. So uh, before we get into the plot, I just wanted to get what, what's everybody's reaction to this movie because this I think this was the first time. I, Kenny, I think you've seen it before, right? Did you say you had seen it before? or No, no, I've not seen this one before. But I think I've watched like similar types of movies, like Andy uh, Lau on a simple. motorcycle. Doing something. Or various people on various types of vehicles <laughs> chopping each other in the back of Hong Kong. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so then everybody fun. hasn't seen it yet, except for me. This is new to everybody. So, what, what's everybody's response to this film? I enjoyed it. I think this is one of those, um, a pretty classic movie um, for people around in the 90s, I'd say. Like, it's one of those movies where it. it I definitely remember hearing about this movie, but, um, just having watched it, um, mostly because I think Andy Lau, you know, was a was a pretty um, good actor in this one. Like, I don't know, had he, I'm sure he's done movies before this one as well, but uh, he he was quite renowned for his acting in this one. And the story, yeah, it was more simple, was simple, it was quite touching, and I think lots of uh, 17 year old girls were swooning at their idea of an Andy Lau swooping by on a motorcycle to uh, <laughs> to get murdered in the street somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, yeah, it was a really good movie. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was a good movie. It's a good change of pace for us. Um, I like that it was very romantic, and Andy Lau um, did a great job. He's an awesome actor. He's one of my favorites. Um, I like the story, and I it shows a glimpse of what life in 1990s Hong Kong could have been like. Um, it was definitely dated to me but i did enjoy it very much yeah this is a movie that it's not a genre i'm really i've seen much of but this felt like a really archetypal version of it it was really done well so like it felt you know i i i I was really glad i got to see it it felt it felt like i was watching a classic of this type of movie And, uh, and and it's one of those movies where yeah it's you can kind of see where it's going, but it's still it's still emotionally involving the whole time too. So it, uh, I, yeah, I thought I thought it was very well done. Yeah, and, and obviously I wouldn't have picked the movie if I didn't like it. Um, <laughs> I I really like this film. I think it gets I don't know. It's a really emotional movie. Do you know what I mean? It get mm-hmm. it get it yeah. gets you emotional. At, you know, numerous points in the film. Obviously the ending, and we are going to spoil the ending because we can't talk about the movie without spoiling it so if you are planning on watching this and don't want to be surprised stop listening right now if you don't mind continue listening or if you've seen it continue listening um i mean it it ends very tragically and and i I, but i think it's one of the most i don't know i think i think they really do a good job of building up to that um and i kind of like to talk about that first just because i think it's the it's the most memorable thing about the film do you know what i mean at least for me it's it's the reason i watched the movie i watched the movie to see that ending um, so I was curious what everybody's reaction to the end was, and I guess just to set the stage, it, it, it sort of culminates where it, it's a, it's a sort of star-crossed lover situation where he's in love with this woman who's, uh, she's only 17, so she's going to move to Canada with her family, I think, and the night before she's supposed to move, he marries her, it's sort of, I don't know if it's a real marriage, but they at least perform the ceremony themselves, uh, on a, you know, he takes her on a motorcycle on, on the he, steps of the church. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it was natural. <laughs> but but there was there was pipe organ in the background, so I I I, I took it to be a real marriage. Um, it was, you know, it was he, a romantic gesture. And, and he, 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 
he steals a wedding gown for her, you know he, he does you know and then but then he leaves her he leaves her there to go kill the bad guy in the movie and you know in the fray he himself he gets stabbed and dies and and we can talk more about all of those plot details later but that's what happens so i'm uh, and, and the girl is sort of running through the streets of, of Hong Kong trying to find him. Um, and it doesn't, you know, she, she definitely doesn't get to him in time. Um, so I know, how did people react to that? Not, not, not that the sort of like ending, the tragic ending is unique to Chang Che, but it was a very sort of Chang Che ending, I felt. Just, just the way like everybody was going down to fulfill their goals, and then yeah, we end with just people bleeding out on the streets. <laughs> well, and also that that was the thing that kind of elevated some of the characters, like the Rambo character, the the Ung Man Tat character. He he's he's laughing because it's like he's the moment that he gets stabbed after he kills Trumpet, he's like restored all of his lost dignity that we just see him being stripped of over the course of the movie, right? Um, so like that, all that violence is, it's, it's very Chang Che in that it's, it's sort of, I guess it's how you become a man in this movie. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's sort of tied to masculinity. But what about Adam and Dion? How'd you guys react to that, that ending? I saw the ending coming and I told you that and you promised me that he wouldn't die and he died so I was mad at you for a very long time. I'm still a little heart upset. But if I had known and you had told me the truth, I would have been better prepared because then I ended up ugly crying again at a movie. So thank you, Brendan. So I want to apologize for that. I thought I was doing the right thing but now I realize I wasn't, and I, I, I'm, I, I didn't, like, I didn't even think that, oh, yeah, Dion might want to be prepared to go into this. Like, that wasn't even, I, I don't watch movies that way, so I wasn't even thinking that way. But once you said that after you got mad at me, I was like, oh, yeah, I can see how she would want to just kind of mentally prepare for it. So I apologize. Um, I saw it coming, and you gave me a false sense of hope, and... I don't, was just so unprepared for it that it just broke my heart. I was so invested in their love story. I knew that they would have to separate at the end, but I just didn't think it was going to be a permanent separation. Yeah. I figured she would go to Canada like she was supposed to, and he would go back into his gang life. But no, it was just so shocking for me. Well, and I should have realized you were asking for confirmation that he dies. Like you had figured it out. And you were basically just asking me to confirm it for yes. you. And and I kind of pulled a prick move and said, I promise he doesn't die. And uh, and so, I, again, I apologize. Um, Adam, what did you think of it? Yeah, the ending is very affecting. I mean, it, I, I, I like the touch, too. That I mean, you have the, the music at the end of the movie, but the way it just goes to silence for the credits. Well, not silence, but just the sounds of the city as, you know, the sun starting to come up and everything. I was... Uh, it was it was just a, a nice dramatic touch there, but yeah, I I don't know. I, I was prepared for a tragic ending through just from the title. I was just like, oh, well, like I said, I, you know, I didn't know for sure if they'd die, but I was pretty sure he was going to die. But I mean, the uh, a moment of romance doesn't imply <laughs> a happily <laughs> a ever after and a happy relationship. So. I, I I was pretty braced for it, but yeah, like I said, it, it's still it's still affecting. It's 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 I mean, you know, it's Andy Lau. He's uh, he's 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 very good at that kind of thing. I I thought the music too really did help this movie a lot. Like the the music, it felt like a music video at the end. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I, I feel like some of these action movies at their height when they when they use music, well, they you, they can fully immerse you in everything because you're just sort of you know the music and the visuals are all going together. And there were actually. Why do you say that actually? Because I'm, I I think I remember like going to karaoke when I was younger, like of with my parents and stuff and yeah it's a, it's a thing you do in Hong Kong you get karaoke with your parents and family and stuff and um and I I think so like we, we, there were some songs where the backdrop of it wasn't like a standard uh MTV sound. it was actually like a, excerpts from a movie mm. so I think they do might they like the, yeah but maybe for some songs they actually do just take clips from the movie and then like synchronize it up so and then and then have that as a karaoke song no, it makes total sense. I mean, like one of the things I do is on YouTube, you can find the uh, the opening theme song for the film, and they'll play clips of the movie with it. I put it up on Twitter today, 
and it's great to just sort of watch because the music and the film are so uh you know it just, it just you know it ties really well together with the themes of the movie and also in that last scene you get you get a few different bits of music you get that sort of i forget what it was but it was like a rock style music that you were hearing when he was smashing the window to get the wedding dress and stuff but then when they get to the church you hear the pipe organ music and then there's a silence when he's just driving through the streets of hong kong and you see that his nose is bleeding and and then you get that 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 theme song again that uh you know, I, I wish I had the the title of it in front of me. I think it I think it's called "If the World Had Romance," but I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, but the song is what made me message you and say ask you if he would die because <laughs> the um the the words to the music and what they were doing it was just so sad for me that I I knew one of them was going to die and I presumed it was going to be him. And that's why I messaged you because it just sparked in me that mm. that was what was going to happen. So, but, so the music's very effective in affecting the way that you feel about these characters and their story. Yeah, there's I, I just, Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Adam. I just learned from Stephen King novels: the characters that have persistent nosebleeds always die. <laughs> well, I think there was a thing. With, <laughs> I was, I, that was when I knew. I the, knew there was a not. thing. I, I mean, I don't know if it was in a bunch of movies, but I feel like in a lot of action movies at this time, nosebleeds were a really big thing, and and they would like to and they would convey different kinds of injuries by having different color fluids leaking out of the. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, well, it reminded me of it. Like in Wuxia movies, they have the the mouth out of the blood a lot to refer to mm-hmm. some kind of internal injury. I was thinking of that, but the nose the nose was new to me. I, I think he was supposed to have a brain injury. Of some yeah. kind. That was my my take on it. I don't know if that's what you know what they were going yeah. for because he looked like he was. I mean, they they seemed to be signaling that something really bad had happened to him. That he wasn't just going. Yeah, there's to... an air about him that he knew he was dead. I mean, yeah. you know, obviously he gets more wounded during the final fight. But the impression I got was that he was he was already a dead man before he went to that fight, one way or another. Like he probably would have been fine if like concussion is no joke. Like he needed to get treatment, but because he instead decided to go uh, have a last romantic moment with JoJo and then go kill the opponent, <laughs> kill, kill the other team lead, <laughs> sort of. Yeah, it's, it's it makes it more of a tragic end than anything else because like I was just sat there thinking like oh if only he'd gone to get medical attention for his head trauma instead things could have ended differently. Though he did get medical treatment earlier in the movie and it wasn't the best in the world. He 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 lives with the the aunties that are I think prostitutes and yeah. and they brought a doctor to the house. So I imagine it would be a similar type situation where he wouldn't just go to a hospital. He would have this sort of sketchy doctor that comes and uh examines him um but he, rec- he, he so that's funny because throughout the movie he gets injured quite a few times <laughs> there's um he, he seems to recover remarkably quickly unless like to try and like skip over how much time actually has actually gone past between each incident well there's even one injury that we don't even see how he gets right there's the one when he goes to macau mm. to, to his to his grandfather and we just see him and he's got like all this like I don't know, he's got like an arm brace on and like a neck that he like he's terribly injured and we have no idea how it occurred, right? I think that was an implied um revenge fight against whoever might have killed the big boss. Mm. Um I don't know if, if that actually happened. Like it, it's sort of after the hospital scene that he, well, he escaped from Macau, right? Yeah. I think yeah. so, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's right. Or it could have just been the initial power struggle, like you know, just the chaos of, 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 of the aftermath of the boss's death. Um, what what part of the movie did you guys prefer? Did you prefer prefer like the romance? Did you prefer the stuff with the police guy? Did you prefer the sort of criminal underworld stuff that was going on? I mean, I I, I think it all needs to be there for it to work as a movie. Mm. Like, I think the romance might have been a little bit um, shallow to start with. There was, like, no reason why... There's not much reason why someone would suddenly, you know, fall in, fall in love or be attracted to someone who just kidnapped her off the street with a gun to her head. Uh, <laughs> and then 
you know, would be threatened by the other gang members to finish her so that she wouldn't be able to um, to snitch on them, right? So it, it, that part just felt a bit too. Uh, I'm not sure, too sure about that. But as it goes, as as the movie went on, you know, he's, and seeing how they interacted and how they, you know, um, what the, all the things they went through together, then yeah, you know, I can see, I can see, you know, relationship developing that way. It's just that the initial hit of that was kind of like. Eh. Well, I think I don't think she falls in love with him until he gets stabbed protecting her. I think that's when she actually falls in love with him if i remember she went out of her way to do a lot of things for him even before that i think so well, she lied for him she definitely lied she lied for him right so she made right. soup for him like in chinese culture making soup for someone is a very but that, but that was wasn't that um wasn't that after he got stabbed, I can't remember, that was after he got stabbed. Because, yeah, that was after. Because he got she brought stabbed. the soup to him. She brought the soup to Rambo, and Rambo said, "Oh, he's never been stabbed for a girl before." Girl before, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, and I must have mixed that up in my head. There, I don't know why I thought that was. Because uh... I'm pretty sure it's that scene where he's stumbling down the stairs, and it, you know he's dramatically all wounded and stuff, and re- refusing help, and she's trying to help him. And the rest of the movie is a lot like her role in the relationship is kind of tending to his wounds, right? It's very sort of, you know, uh, old fashioned. What he needs isn't the girlfriend, it's a personal nurse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what Wadi needs. Yeah. Well, think of it. Think of Wadi. He's, he's been re- he was reared by three beautiful women, right? Who, like, you know, and all we ever see them do is tending to his wounds. So, yeah, you know? that's the only way he can relate to women is to, to have. <laughs> but, yeah, I agree with you, Kenny. It took me a little while to warm up to the romance. First, it felt a little arbitrary to me, but it, it, then it kind of just snuck up on me. I can't say exactly when in the movie it happened but yeah I, I i bought into it once once it got going and here's the women woman's perspective <laughs> <laughs> i totally bought into it from the beginning i kind uh-huh. of thought that she was um falling for him um right af- after the kidnapping part where she he protected her from the um his friends that wanted to kill her right away in the field that to me was kind of like, okay, this makes him a lot more interesting. Yage did try to kidnap me, but think again. She's 17 years old. Yeah. She's privileged. Yeah. She's being kept away from people. So I don't, in her don't, mind, you know, yeah, he kidnapped me, but, you know, he is hot. He's Andy Lau. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah we, we do have to emphasize, like, it's not like he's just any old, you know, member of the gang. It's, I mean, and the movie takes pains to like have him sort of standing in front of explosions while music is playing. You know what I mean? There's like, there's a lot of stuff that's trying to paint this guy as like a tremendous hunk. And so I think that, you know, you. He didn't need much help to begin with, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, they shot him at great angles. I mean, he looks perfect in this movie. He's like every 17 year old's dream, and here he's going to save you from being murdered in a field he takes responsibility for you he even drives you back home (laughs) then he gets stabbed trying to protect you so that's where she's definitely head over heels but yeah she was a goner from the beginning (laughs) but the uh, the sheltered 17 year old does does cover a lot I have to agree with you on that. That it, does make sense. And also, they do establish that her mom is really controlling about like what she's supposed to be doing, and it doesn't seem that she's, you know, it, it, like this. This is a little bit of a rebellion, maybe on her part, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So, mm. like you know, her mom comes back from Canada and gives her two pamphlets and says to pick one of the schools, you know, like. Uh, so well, she was more like she, what she said was like, yeah, I've. I've sorted out through all the different pamphlets for the university. I picked two of them. Yeah. You can choose from those two. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 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 And I'm pretty sure in the pamphlets she probably highlighted and said, "This is my choice." <laughs> well, because all we ever see the mom do is 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 come in and, and and tell her what to do, and the dad is the one who's kind of like, "I love you, hun." Like you know, just you know, he's like always kind of like shooting her little supportive messages from 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 the shadows, but. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, but I think I think like I kind like the first time I saw it, I was sort of leaning towards what Adam and Kenny were saying. But the more that I watched this movie, the more I saw how the pieces all fit into place, like mm-hmm. Dion was saying. 
Um, you know, and that's and like it was this past time that I watched it that I realized, oh, I think the moment that she really falls in love with him is when he gets stabbed. Like that's when it's like true love. Um, and so, you know, I, I think they do it, but I think they do a good job with the romance part. I think my only complaint, and it's not, it's, I don't know if it's a big or a small one, is the, the music selection when they're hang, hang gliding uh, in Macau. I, 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 I understand why they did it. It just, it's just in comparison to the rest of the music in the film, it, it, it kind of let me down. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I can see how subsequent views would help, too, because the point in the movie when I was kind of doubting things, that we hadn't seen much information about her. We didn't know about her family life. I didn't know. I can see watching it a second time and being like, oh, yeah, I, I get it more now. Well, and I guess also there's, there is this, the fact of there's like the adrenaline rush of all this stuff that's going on. Like she gets kidnapped and she almost dies. Mm -hmm. Like who knows what mental state that puts you in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, I, I, I think it would be very difficult to predict how a normal person is going to react to that. Um, yeah, but yeah. And another thing, you never see her have any friends. She says to her mother that she's on the phone that she's going to go spend the night with a friend who's going to America. But she, you never see her with any kind of friends during the whole movie. And usually girls have girlfriends that they're talking about the guy that they're into with so it's you know she's really really sheltered if she doesn't have any friends yeah no yeah i didn't get the impression that that she had that many friends either but unless it was something we, we just weren't supposed to see but I assume was there um, well i assume from the fact that you know her mom didn't have any reaction to that and, and the caretaker didn't really react to her saying that oh i'm going to see a friend or whatever that surely like, that she actually does have friends mm -hmm. but they weren't necessarily important to the story. Like I think yeah. it was already like well established that she's very sheltered and very privileged as well. Because I knew that from seeing the number of the house. It was the number eight. Um, the number eight on a on a door of on, 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 on a property is going to raise its price like double over just because of the connotations of being lucky in in Chinese language. I, I didn't so, even like, notice the number. That's really uh, yeah, that's a really good catch. Eight's one of my favorite numbers. In fact, 88's my favorite number. So when I saw the eight, I was like, ooh, eight, cool. Well, and also the house just looks really swanky. It's like, a, a, mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was 1990, so obviously the TV's not like a TV like we would have today, but like it looked like a top-of-the-line TV from that period. She had like the latest VHS player. Her parents weren't sending her letters from Canada. They were sending her video tape of them talking to her, which even my parents had a had a camera they wouldn't have done that because it would have been a waste of a perfectly good vhs tape do you know what i mean so i could have recorded the x files yeah oh. well <laughs> <laughs> no but those were kind of expensive do you know what i mean like you, you didn't mm -hmm. just so and then to ship them um i don't know my dad would have sent a letter is what i'm saying he wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have shipped a vhs tape um but but yeah so they, they were they were obviously very well off and uh and also just the fact that they're clearly easily moving between countries like that. Do you know what I mean? Just like, you know, it's not that's not a luxury, everybody. Like definitely you don't get the impression that Wadi can be picking up and going to Canada anytime he wants to. Um But uh but yeah, and also I think um, you know, his life is just such a contrast to hers too. Like his life you know, he's he, his mother committed suicide. I guess shortly after he was born and he's raised by those three women and he lives in like a, I don't know, an apartment in that building on the roof. Um, and you know, he just, you know, it doesn't seem like he's had any of the, any of the breaks that she had growing up. Yeah. So you got the contrast. One has a mother that essentially abandoned him and the other one has one that won't leave her alone. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, what did you guys think of the uh, the criminal underworld stuff and the action sequences, like the fighting and uh, and just the gang warfare stuff? Certainly, because I, I I did feel like this movie, if you trans, if they like modified all of the gang warfare stuff to like sect wars and whatnot, like this could very perfectly be a wuxia movie as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did yeah, have a Zhang Hu vibe yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, and even like. 
like the police officers weren't portrayed as like you know upholders of justice or whatnot. They were just like thugs, just like the um, the, the gang members, right? But just the just the thugs that are hired by the government instead, basically, is how how they sort of came across and um, in the movie. Like the angry detective was like. And I liked him actually. Like he was, he was just so angry at everything. I, 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 <laughs> he was just very determined was, to get his man. It's, he just was like that. Was just his. He, he, he and, and and our point of view is almost entirely shaped by Rambo. I feel in this movie, like Rambo is kind of the one that sets <laughs> sets the viewer's reaction up to this guy, because um, because he talks about his. What his grandfather, who was a cop, that didn't put errors on like this man. And, uh-huh. You know. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah I, Oh, go, go ahead, ahead, Adam. No, you go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I was expecting to see more of the cop interwoven through this investigation. But, you know, the investigation never really went anywhere yeah. eventually. So I, was, I liked him, too, and I was hoping to see more of him. Or at least I thought I'd see more of him. But, you know, his, he has a, an abrupt end to his role. Well, he's just pulled it's, out. It's one of these hour and thirty minute movies, and so they're like hyper efficient. Do you know what I mean? It's like the the point when he comes back into the film in Macau, you forget about him at that stage, and then and then he suddenly returns, and then that plot thread resumes and ends very quickly, and then and then the that catapults everything into the finale. Um, but Adam, were you going to say something? You looked like you had a thought, or was it? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I, you know, some of this stuff, like people's reaction to the cop, and and. And also my reaction to the parents in this, it's like, I can tell I'm just getting old now because if I watched this movie when it came out, I would have been totally on the side of the young people. But I'm like, yeah, her mother just wants her to go to college. Jeez, she, I mean. She and doesn't, the, and the cop, she doesn't like, want her daughter. He, he was, the cop just it? wants to get this guy for stealing jewels. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously I had sympathy for the main characters that I'm saying. I, my sympathies were more spread throughout the cast they would have been when i was younger well, well the mother just doesn't want her daughter dating a member of the triads right like yeah that's the, exactly you know? i that's that's and, and also i was so i was thinking about that while i was watching this movie i was thinking well what if she gets what she wants what if she's able to stay with him and all i kept thinking of was the scene where he gets drunk and trashes the place and i'm like yeah. how many nights are going to be like that uh, if yeah. she stays with with Wadi, is is that is you know because like yeah now it's great because they're in love and they're passionate but like in five ten fifteen years with her every with, night becomes that <laughs> yeah with her personality and his personality is the chemistry going to lead to you know you know some volatility or what's going to happen um, but but yes yeah, so, so, but, but I think that's like you said Adam a product of getting old <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, I did definitely did find myself thinking, you know, there's some, some domestic abuse vibes being set up there. I don't like this place being so clean. What are you yeah. doing, cleaning everything? Well, yeah. and we should emphasize it was 1990, so like obviously it was a different time, and and I don't know if that's you know, but like, but also he's a triad. Like if like they have to have him do stuff like that or it's not really believable, right? Like, otherwise you're not going to believe that he's a member of this terrible gang because he's committed horrible... Like, okay, the whole thing that they... It's in the movie's favor. What was that? Go ahead. uh, Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, okay. So, So, like, the whole thing that they... Like, the way that they pass time and have fun is they race around on trucks... With, with with their girlfriends or just women they know standing on the top and they have to knock off the other guy's woman, right? Like, it's incredibly uh-huh. dangerous that one of the women right at the beginning of the movie gets thrown through a windshield and gets glass stuck in her face and Wadi doesn't care at all when that happens. He's just like, oh, time to go. You know, like, we, we better run because the cops are coming. But he doesn't have any sense of empathy for this woman that got her face smashed through the window. So well, he's, the movie, he does it to another girl. I mean, yeah. it's like he literally he, he does it that. to her. He does it to the to the love interest in the movie. Um, well, no, I'm saying, but I'm saying he wins too, which means he also knocked this other oh, girl yeah. off a truck. It's like, yeah, I mean, but yeah, I think it's the movie's benefit really that they that he is kind of a somewhat dark individual. It makes, yeah. If they went out of their way, oh, he's he's just got a pure heart of gold, and you know, it's like I don't think the movie would have been as strong as the fact that yeah, this is. He's he's pretty ambiguous here. It made it more interesting for me. I did wonder how many people went out and tried to do that after this movie came out. Like, did that Jeez. become like a local thing? Like people going out and racing women on trucks, or was that you know? Like remember what was the movie Teen Wolf, right? 
where uh, where Jason Bateman was was it Jason? Was it Michael J. Fox in the original team? Yeah, movie? Michael J. Fox. Yeah. yeah, he's surfing on the top of the van, right? That was the big thing uh-huh. that he did. And then like, and and in in Back to the Future, they had him like grabbing the back of people's cars. And I remember people trying to do that thing where they would grab onto the back of people's cars after that movie came up while they were on skateboards. And so I just, you know, I was curious. But but I will say that was a really, it was kind of a cool scene though. Cause like they, they create this sort of sense of the world that all these characters inhabit with that opening sequence at the, I, I don't know what to call it, the 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 truck derby thing that they it's have. It's very going. Mad Max. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> It, it was incredibly reckless. Like, like the, the, you have to have yeah, get, very little regard for human life to do that. For back to this topic again. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, what, 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 I like, this is so dangerous. What are those kids doing? <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I t- uh, messaged Brendan and said, gosh, it's got to be dangerous to be Wadi's girlfriend. Oh, is the, okay. That's what you were thinking. Of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what did you what did you guys think of the scene when he brings her to the truck derby and he puts her on the top of the truck and races with her? Yeah, I thought that was just. I thought it was mean, to be honest. I thought that well, he would wanted to show her that his lifestyle was dangerous and that he should that she shouldn't be with him. But I think there was a better way of showing it than to put her on top of a truck. Yeah. When he took her there, I thought he was trying to scare her. But yeah, literally putting her on the truck isn't trying to scare her. That's just putting her in mortal peril. So I, know, I think he was. Like, I think you're right, though. I think he was trying to scare her. And he just wasn't as worried as you or I would be about <laughs> the potential danger. Um, he, had, he had confidence in his own skills. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but also she had the best retort to it because she was able to tell him that the reason she was looking for him that day because it was her birthday. Right. And so then that mm. like, and so then he's like, that sort of throws him off. And then that's when the romance kind of starts. Right. So. That was, I, that was kind of weird, actually. It's like, oh, I, I almost, almost got you killed, but it's your birthday. Oh, jeez. No, well, no, I think, that. but I think the significant, so she's, she, I think she was turning 17. And I think 17 must have been the legal age in Hong Kong at the time. Right. Uh-huh. That, so I think that's what the significance was. I don't um, think it is. Yeah, you don't think so? 18. I, don't know, I think. It's... I think it's. I think it must because I. I think I looked it up when I saw the movie, and I'm pretty because wouldn't that cop have had him arrested otherwise? Right? Because all all because that cop was looking for any excuse to put him in jail, right? And well, I, I, if we're assuming this is following UK sort of laws, and I think 16 is the age of consent. Okay, so all right, maybe maybe I'm wrong on that one then. Let me have a look. Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just a warning, warning before you Google that. Just uh... <laughs> remember to look up 1990, Kenny, because it might have been different in 1990. Um, so I guess while well, Kenny looks that up, what, what was it? It's 16. 16. Okay, so my theory is wrong. Um, but. Uh, Okay, so I feel we'll, bad for her though. I feel like she said there. Her with the way she says that really did kind of make, oh man. No, I that mean, she, if you you really sort of feel it. bad when you see it, right? You feel like his guilt when, when yeah, she says that. It landed. It yeah. really did land. Uh, what did you guys think of the fighting? Like the actual fighting in the movie? Realistic, um, expected street gang fighting. Mm-hmm. It was very gritty and yeah, chaotic and realistic. I'd say. Yeah, I thought I thought it, I I like the scene when he gets bashed in the head with the the oxygen tank or whatever the hell that is. That was tank. it was a propane yeah. tank. Yeah, because because you, you see what I love about that scene is you see trumpet pick up the the tank and you're like, oh, what's he gonna do with that? And then you're trying you you know you're sort of trying to imagine what's gonna happen and then he just smashes him in the back of the head and uh you know it's it kind of reminds me of um. In, in the movie A Better Tomorrow, there's sort of a similar thing that happens with the Chow Yun Fat character where he gets beat up to the point that his nose starts leaking green fluid. And you know that that's really, really bad, right? You just, you're just like, oh my God, that's really horrible. And so it's kind of the same thing where he gets hit and his nose starts bleeding. You're like, oh, something broke inside a wadi. And, 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 and it, it, I just felt that the use of that tank really 
you know, if, if it was a bat, it wouldn't have been as impactful to the viewer. But having it be this really unusual makeshift weapon, I thought, I thought really accentuated that that injury that he got. Yeah, and also, yeah, towards the, in the climax of the movie when when he was trying to assassinate Trumpet, and he gets his head bashed against the curb again. Now I was just like, oh, <laughs> I just cringed again. I was thinking, yeah, oh, no, no, there's no coming back. Like, even if I had any hope after being after his always nosebleeds up to that point, him bashing his head on the curb a second time in the same place where Trumpet initially whacked him, which like, oh no, that's that's not, not the, happening. The pacing of the blood flow with his nose was very well done. I thought, like the the I don't I don't know how to put it, but like they just did a really good job of drawing your attention to it when it needed to be drawn to it and mm -hmm. whatever i don't know what i don't know what cinematic trick they were using i don't know like i i i don't know if they have like a nose blood capsule that they they were using for him <laughs> but but whatever they did it worked really well um and uh but okay so let's talk about the characters uh and before we get into like the characters like trumpet who we obviously will need to talk about i want to talk first about the aunties that raised wadi um and just if people had any reaction to them, or any any one of them in particular. Well, I, are you going to be referring to the singing one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> she was annoying. She was annoying. I found her very charming, actually. I was I was very charmed by her singing habit. Oh, I thought that was annoying. I can't believe I I can't stand when people have to sing everything. That's just a natural hab habit for me. To be annoyed by, I I don't know. Well, and she wasn't even singing in the normal way. It was like a really theatrical. It was like pure, like whatever she was doing, she had purely cobbled together for the movie for effect. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like, it wasn't like a normal person singing a song. It, it looked like something out of an anime or out of a cartoon. You know, it was it was a really unusual characterization. Um, and the and and the stuff she was singing sounded kind of unusual, right? Like it. <laughs> It was odd. It was, it, but but every time I watch the movie, I focus on that character because Dion, like you, I was annoyed when she first shows up, like the first time I saw it. But then I was like, I really want to like figure out what she's actually doing in each of these scenes because it's like she's just singing the whole time; she doesn't stop. And and I and and so I, I just whenever those scenes happen now, that's the character that I focus on. Um, but yeah, I don't know, Adam and Kenny, do you guys have any thoughts on the aunties? I just like how, like, I remember when the first sort of, um, when he was coming back after the, after um, sending Jojo home for the first time, and um, and he's going up the stairs, like, one of the aunties is smoking, and after, like, he hands over some, I don't know, some food or whatever to them, and he just takes a cigarette from her mouth and just starts smoking it, and just going, <laughs> just... <laughs> You know, that was so smooth, I didn't even notice it until you just mentioned it. That's That's how smooth that move was. Yeah, and, I, and, she, and the, the aunt didn't react at all. And she's, oh, by the way, you know, it's, it's your mum singing. And yeah, it's like, oh, that was a smooth move from him. Well, and there's also a guy coming out of the house smoking, too, when he gets when he walks up there. Um, yeah. Adam? No, I, 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 I enjoyed the auntie's characters. I mean, I like when the... Uh... When JoJo's introduced to, you know, their, their little debate between each other, whether she should call them moms, you know, is, uh, is pretty entertaining. But yeah, no, it was, they, they, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of elements to this movie that all, you know, I mean, you asked earlier what was our favorite element stuff. It's like everything kind of fits together really well in this movie that, you know, I, I, it's, it, I mean, that's just another piece of it that I, I really it, liked. It is a really tight film. I do feel like mm -hmm. all the pieces fit together very well. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so we got to talk about Trumpet, though, because Trumpet is definitely, he's, he's the bad guy, he's the other captain in the Triad organization, he's the older brother guy, so there's, there's what, what was it, brother number seven, was that, was that Wadi's boss? Um, yeah. mm -hmm. and then, and brother then Trumpet, seven, yeah. And Trumpet is sort of like the rival who, we were talking before the podcast, I think we all agreed he's incredibly unlikable, like, like right down to his facial expressions, he's just very easy to hate. And, and and beyond that, he's always antagonizing Wadi, and 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 the thing that's interesting about it is, is, a lot of his complaints are actually kind of legitimate if you're looking at what's actually going on in the movie. Like like you know the the things he's asking for are things you would expect a criminal to ask for when they're trying to commit a bank robbery and not go to jail. But but we're seeing everything from Wadi's perspective, and we're obviously not criminals, so we're not sympathizing with 
with trumpets. With murder and, yeah, uh, with trumpets with murderous desire. <laughs> but 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 I'm just saying within that within that like criminal underworld that he inhabits is the things he's asking for aren't unreasonable. Um, yeah, but he's, yeah, well, I can see why he would have had more power when the when the fight does come, you know, to a head yeah. between the two, because he's the one that where most of the criminals are like, yeah, this guy's talking sense. <laughs> so yeah, it makes it, I, I I can see that. But uh, but what what did you guys think of Trumpet? Yeah, he was definitely definitely like played the role really well. Um, you're right. Like his face is just somehow unlikable from the very beginning. Like, mm-hmm. You see him. You see, just like, oh, this this guy's gonna be an asshole somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, when they're he really first good walks at on, oh, go go ahead, Dion. I was gonna say when you when he first walks onto the onto the, the scene, it's just like, uh, he's got to be the villain because he's just sleazy. Just everything about him is just. Ugh. You know, God. you notice his his resting expression is the expression an angry boss makes when you've done something wrong. Do you know what I mean? He's got like that, <laughs> like that's the expression that seems to be his natural neutral expression, and then it only gets worse from there. You know, exactly. But uh, and, and also the the guy just has the right look. He's just got the look of I, I don't know. I, I don't. I like I. I they they're really good at this in this in these movies. They 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 cast really well for like this this person needs to be like the idiot or this person needs to be the annoying person. But I just don't think I've ever seen a guy that was as immediately unlikable as as this character. Um, and it's important because you by the end of the movie you really want him to die. It's important that you want this guy to die. And so they spend the whole movie making sure that you really want this guy to die in the in the in the crucial final moments of the film. Um, yeah, but like you were saying, like yeah, from a, a criminal logical point of view, like nothing he's asking for was unreasonable. Yeah, and I think even he, he's the one who sort of leads charge on um, uh, on the revenge fight against the people who were targeting the the big boss or yeah. something, right? I think he was the one who was just like quite trying to rally all the people up against it. Um, so like in all, in, yeah, he is the better criminal in all, in all senses of the word. I think. Well, he was the one who sort of anticipated the power struggle. I think before it even happened, whereas Brother Seven was maybe a little bit too chill and relaxed. Do you know what I mean like like Brother Seven? I found a more appealing character because he's relaxed. He's very avuncular. But maybe that's not what you want your criminal, you know, uh, <laughs> boss to be. Maybe you know. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think I would want to serve under Trumpet. Trumpet seems like a dangerous person to serve under. Um, yeah, yeah, Trumpet just seems like he would just kill you just for looking yeah. stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. Or for um, looking too smart, either way. Yeah, he would just kill you <laughs> for any reason. But but I think you could make the argument that Brother Seven was sort of tired looking in comparison do you know what i mean like i think brother seven was to me brother seven and waldy really didn't have the heart to be in what they were doing anymore Mm. and they were ready to just get out of that whole entire lifestyle that's what i've got the feeling of wadi from the beginning was he really wasn't interested in the criminal activity anymore he just wanted to live a simple normal life and brother seven was kind of in that vein too and because trumpet could see that that he was going to take full advantage of their feeling and he wanted to rule the gang i don't think that necessarily against the other uh, members of their groups wanted trumpet to be the ultimate boss but he was going to take advantage because of the kind of person he was and the fact that he could see that Seven and Wadi just weren't weren't into it. See, I also think there's a, um, there's a slight split there as well. So there are two types of triads that are being represented in this movie, I think. So there are the old sort of um, honorable triad people. All they do is they collect protection fees or parking fees in the case of Rambo, that kind of stuff. Like they and they, you know, make sure that no other criminals mess with uh uh people in their territory, so to speak. Mm. But then you get people like Trumpet, who are the advocates for violent crime, you know, stealing jewelry and murdering and you know, and, and like going out of the way to cause chaos and havoc. 
for their own like monetary gain or whatever. And though, though we should point out that bank robbery was to fund the big boss's operation. Yeah, but he, it, 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 I think he's on the camp that 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 the new generation of uh, criminals, as opposed to the the, the sort of the, the romantic vision of what yeah. a tribe member should be like, mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah, there's there's yeah, I would agree with that. There's definitely not the romantic said like that like trumpet is not like honorable in the way brother seven is honorable mm-hmm. which is why i think yeah, yeah. Honorable, like brother seven might have been okay like in the old world but in the yeah. new world trumpet right. was the one that would yeah. be able to lead which is why he yeah felt like he was the right person for the job well because there's the mm-hmm. whole scene where the where brother seven stabs himself in order to compensate mm-hmm. uh trumpet and you know it's a pretty impactful scene i don't get the impression mm-hmm. that trumpet would have done that though and he actually looks quite shocked when uh when brother seven does it um but but yeah, so I, I think you're probably right about the it's sort of the the the, the young Turks type situation. Um, so uh, so yeah, so what about um, the uh, the Rambo character? He was funny. He was great. Like Nanda is a very good actor as well. I think like he played the fool quite well. But yeah, yeah, and he. And, and, the, and the character itself already redeemed himself in, in, in the in the final scene. Like, despite the fact, yeah, Wadi was trying to cover for him, like keep him out of trouble by like knocking knocking him out. Mm. But yeah, you know, he still found it within him to, you know, I I, I assume like Brother Seven and Wadi and and and, and Wadi and the rest of the crew were looking up looking out for him like yeah. all these years uh, that he was looking after after his street as it were, right? So you know, this is like his chance to repay the, all the favors that he owes them, and he. And he stepped up, yeah. Despite the fact that you know he, you know, we, we know that he's not a very courageous person in general. He got beat, he got kicked off um, by a bunch of kids from from his territory. And those kids are nothing special. Those kids like do not look tough at all. They look they they they. I mean, they they just weren't they they were like. I think I think the reason those characters act that way is to to sort of emphasize that Rambo is, 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 is kind of a worm in this world, right? Like he just doesn't, he's just somebody who's sort of seen as a coward or, and, and you know, he, he behaves like a coward. Uh, and so, so yeah, to see him go from that to, to that final moment in the movie was great. I thought. Yeah, he's definitely a uh, important element in the movie. No question. And I mean, yeah, he's, he's, I mean, he, he is, he, and he's just a completely sympathetic character, even though he is, like you say, he is kind of a worm, but it's not, I, I don't know, you don't, I, I, you don't think any less of him, at least I didn't think any less of him for it, he's in this really rough position, I mean, he, he adds to the element of desperation for the city, too, that there's this guy who's just trying to wash cars, and even, even being, even, even being in the position of just the guy who goes around, you know, washing cars on the side of the road is still someone who's going to get pushed off from that position. You know, it's still something he has to fight for. To, he does get ripped away from it. It, it. it adds to kind of the whole desperation of the environment, I think, too. Now, um, the... Uh, well, and, and I think the other element, too, is he, he adds the... He really uh, adds to the tragedy because it's that situation mm-hmm. where when you have the comedic character, the clown die in the end that way. I don't know if he, I mean, it's, it's not as clear if he dies as Wadi, but I'm pretty sure Rambo dies as well. I don't know if you guys are all in agreement with that. Um, do we all feel that Rambo probably died? He was, after... he was stabbed yes. a few times yeah. in the streets. So, yeah. yeah. So, so he's probably dead. Um, you know, when, when even the clown dies, then it really kind of, you know, it's like, oh, is a, the, the levity is gone, too. Like, everything <laughs> everything has been, everything that was good has been drained from this movie. You know, you, you, there, there's, there's it's it, like, in, if in the wake of a film, you wouldn't want to be in that world that they created because it's now so cold and lonely after all of the colorful characters have departed. You know, then, you know, I think they've sort of done their job. Um, yeah, which is what, which, which is what makes the ending like the the, the actual like uh, the credit scene like so much more poignant. It's just like the silence, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just like the, the everything that mattered in the world is now gone, and all you have is like at the start of a new day. Now, I mean, there's some hope there. The sun's coming up again, but it was still pretty like drab and gray. Well, and I guess the only character that remains to follow is the JoJo character, and like, what is she gonna? 
what happens to her after this? Like, wh- like where does like you know like it, I can't imagine that she's gonna have much of a normal life after she discovers that Wadi's been murdered, um, just after she married him at that at that church. Um, so you know that's one of the things I always kind of wonder about is well, what sort of person does she become in the wake of this movie? Does she become stronger? Does she become weaker? Is she like a broken person because of all these things that happened to her? Yeah, well, it's it's interesting because you know Wagi's thing. It's it's you know it's a romantic gesture to come and and sweep her off her feet right before she was about to leave for Canada and take her off and marry her. But it's like there's also there's also something vaguely selfish about it too because it makes everything so much worse for her than if she just just gone to Canada and it, it just being this you know it just adds another element of. I don't know. It's it's really complicated, you know. Depending on yeah, how I guess you look at it. I think he would, probably wouldn't have gone to her if if her if her letter to him didn't say love without regrets. Mm, uh, yeah, you know, which is which is what the, yeah. the whole premise of their relationship was based on. Now, yeah, you know, when 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 he was in Macau and she goes to visit him, and yeah, and and he straight just tells her, "I have nothing to offer you." Yeah, do you still want to be with me? And she like left it the chance, and that, I think mean, that that that's already sort of sealed it for them, and. And, and, and yeah, you know, and when he's realized that he was not long for the world already, and that he had like he's probably going to lose his life with his final sort of mission as well, mm-hmm. and just seeing love without regrets, like he, I think he just wanted to close that loop of the story for both her and for himself. And so, so maybe she does end up stronger as a result. If if she meant the love with no regrets line, then yeah. you know maybe she's able to 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 move forward after the after the movie or after the events um i don't know dion what do you think i think well i think she was probably broken for a while and it would, well it would take me a lot of therapy to get over that but um yeah i i think it probably would have made her stronger in the end i mean she's only 17 she'll probably end up going to canada with her family um, and she would have new experiences, but I think she would carry YD with her for a while, but the whole experience would probably make her stronger. Well, it would put things in perspective. Like a lot of the petty concerns, the people that she's going to encounter at college would have would be nothing. You know, it's like, <laughs> right. oh, you think you have it bad. You know, my husband died in a triad war. You know, like, you don't, it's just... you don't, you don't like the roommate you were assigned? <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> so... So, yeah, so... I was kidnapped off the street during a bank, during a bank robbery. <laughs> and then... Yeah, no, I, I think I think she's a pretty tough character, really. Looking over the movie, I mean, she, you know, she's willing to stand up to her mother, which is not an easy thing, you know, at least a couple times in the movie. And I mean, she, she, you know, I mean, she, she, she is not a weak character, so I'm sure she would get through it and be as no, okay as you can be. The the fact that she sought him out the way she did that that a timid person wouldn't be able to do that, right? Like, yeah, way, you know. So I, I think you're right. Um, so I wonder if she's gonna like, go into like medicine in university, <laughs> fulfill her nursing. Yeah, what, what does she go into? Study? Yeah, that would be I would be curious about that as well. Uh. Um, maybe she'll specialize in traumatic brain injury. Maybe that'll be her. Uh. <laughs> but uh, are there any other characters that we should talk about before we get to the recommendation and rating of the movie? I think we talked about everyone already, basically. Mm-hmm. So we're out of characters. All right. So, uh, so then in that case, on a scale of one to five, how would you guys rate it, and would you recommend it to people? I guess starting with Kenny. Oh, I feel bad, but I do want to give this movie a five. Like I, I say, I feel bad just because like I haven't given many other movies fives and it feels like it's a bit of a strange movie to, to to rate so highly but i just really enjoyed the movie and i just thought everything just fit together so well and um yeah i i sure the movie probably has flaws somewhere but it'll take me a bit of effort to think of a few so i think that's already enough to warrant a high score on my end and i i think if anyone's sort of interested in um in 
sort of gang movies from the 90s in Hong Kong. I think this is definitely one movie you have to watch. And even if you're not, then you can still enjoy it for its uh, romance and uh, and the tragedy overall. I think it's really good. Adam, how about you? Yeah, I, I'm i going to go with a five on this too for the reason that as I said at the beginning, this felt really archetypal. It felt like if you wanted to show someone a movie, it's like, this is a, a tragic ga- Hong Kong gangster type story. It's like, this, this is just the perfect example. I don't think, I don't think you could do better in recommending a movie in that category than this one as far. I mean, I mean maybe you can, maybe someone's going to go, Oh, I don't know. But I, 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 I just thought this was pretty perfect for what it was. Dion? Um, I don't know. I'm torn between giving it a three and a four. Um, I guess I my five would would be Disciples of Shaolin. Um, so I I really have a hard time giving a movie a five. Mm. But um, I'm waffling between a three and a four. But I'm going to go with the four because I do want to watch it again i enjoyed the movie um i just it's not my usual type of movie that i go for but i it went so well together the music yeah everything just fits so well it's not a perfect movie because to me it's i don't know it's it's just not my type of movie that i would normally go for but i did enjoy it and i would and i will watch it again at least two more times. So I'm going to give it a four. And I would give it a five. I even wrote down five so you guys could see. Because I, I knew there'd be a lot of fives. He's got, he's I didn't want people to five envelopes me. down there. If you want. <laughs> yeah, I got five different envelopes. No, just that one. But I would give it a five. Um, I, do, I do watch a lot of movies like this, and I feel like this one is a is just one of the best examples of this style of film. And it's it's basically a heroic bloodshed film with heart to it. You know what I mean? And, then, mm-hmm. and the heart is what makes all the difference. The, uh, you know, like I, I, I showed a friend this movie and A Better Tomorrow uh, the same day, and they hadn't seen either of them. And A Better Tomorrow is a classic movie. It's a great film. I, I highly recommend it. But this one actually landed better with the friend, and I was surprised. And I think the reason why is because of that really strong love story that gives all of the violent scenes their emotional weight and the music and all the other, you know, I think... Just in comparison to A Better Tomorrow, I think they get the music right more in this film than in A Better Tomorrow. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I think it, it's, a, it's, an, it's a really fabulous film, and it's, it's a great example of, of you know, just sort of... You, you just, I, I think Hong Kong movie making in general, but, but more specifically, like, the, the heroic bloodshed and, you know, sort of action-oriented stuff. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's just... It, the more I see it, the more I like it too. You know what I mean? Like I've I've seen it now, like I don't know, eight times or so, and it just gets better every time I see it. So, uh, I, I oh. what was that? I was saying, well, well it, it, yeah, we are done with that one. Do one last shout out to the 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 band Beyond as well. It's just like they they did the soundtrack for the movie, um, and they're a really good band. It's one the one that I still listen to nowadays uh, on occasion. But the main singer actually has, has passed away um, in 1993, I think, a couple, a couple of years after this movie. So this is like, yeah, the the, the, the soundtrack was entirely done by Beyond, and they're a really good group. If you like the movie, then you can check out some of the other was, stuff as was well. Was that the more rock-oriented music that was being played when he was smashing windows? Um, I think every song in the movie was by Beyond, actually. Um, but they did the probably did, did it in different styles. Okay. Okay. Because what? We'll, okay. We'll 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 uh, we'll we'll explore this after. Because um, I'm not I'm not I'm not familiar with the the background of the music, but uh, um, but yeah, I, I thought that the um, the the music was just great. There there was just no uh, uh, it's sort of it's sort of like a Star Wars type situation where I can't imagine this film without the music. Do you know what I mean? The the you know, with the exception of the 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 music played in Macau, all the other music I felt was just so completely tied to everything that was going on. Um, and so I, I'd recommend it to people. 
I think uh, I think it's worth picking up if you can find it on DVD. There's actually a new Blu-ray out, which I got specifically for this viewing. I had had it on DVD before, and I was really pleased with the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray looks amazing. It looks it, you can see like you know when you can see all the grain on the film. Do you know what I mean? Like you can see the. It looks like you're watching it in a movie theater. That's that's how good the Blu-ray is. Um, so, no zero complaints with the Blu-ray, and um, and yeah, so uh, go out and see it, and you know we'll we'll be back next week again. Check out our Patreon, and also uh, if people missed it, they can check out the Wusha Workshop discussion of Golden Swallow and Lady Hermit, where we kind of uh, compare the uh, the the different takes on Jeng Pei Pei between two different directors. Um, so, so yeah, so, and I guess until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye.